Well, welcome. My name is Jody Hickerson, and I'm here with George Barna and David Kinneman, um, looking at this new book that they've got together that they've worked this first collaborative effort between the two of you all called Churchless. And so we're just going to spend some time uh, discussing what the data in this book and what you guys have learned. Um, so this book, which um, you've worked on for the first time um, together, why should we learn about the churchless? Like, why is it important to understanding who the churchless are, like as a as a group of of people? Well, I think um, I'll jump in first. Is uh, that that recognizing that these trends have. Um, huge impact on the way our churches and faith organizations work. So recognizing that, I mean, this is based on uh, two decades of tracking research. So we were able to compare, you know, over time how people's views towards the church have changed. So the unchurched in the early 90s, the unchurched wow. in the early 2000s, and the unchurched today. Um, there's some real massive changes. Uh, like, it is harder to be a church leader. It is harder today based on this data to, to go out and say, invite your friends to church. And so recognizing sort of the, the huge um, context in which these trends play out as a church leader is very important to us as, as researchers. And so trying to inform pastors and church leaders and Christians about that uh, is very important. I think it makes us more wise, more discerning about how we do the work of, of the ministry today. And, and I think certainly one of the things that the data show is that this population of churchless people is growing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's not the goal of the Christian church is to see that population grow. So if we want to turn that trend around, we've got to understand what these people are thinking, what they're doing, why they're making these particular choices, what we could do to actually serve them better, to understand them, to love them, to do everything we can to help them get closer to God. Uh, I think without that kind of research, you wind up making an educated guess here and there. One of the things that really shocked me, having tracked this for 30 years, is seeing how little younger Americans, well, all churchless, but particularly the younger churchless Americans, how little they know about Christian history, how little they know about what the church in America has added in terms of value to our society. One of the questions that we had asked them was, you know, what do you think is the the, the positive value that churches have added to America. And, you know, there's a lot of silence on the other end of the phone. You know, they couldn't think of anything positive that the church stood for. And then you think about, all right, what we're asking them to do is to change their behavioral patterns so that this group of people, this institution, this set of practices becomes normative in their life. Why would they do that? They have no sense that it, 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 produces anything of real value in the world. You know, they want to make a difference with their life. They want their time to matter. They want to be remembered for something useful. Okay, but in their minds, the church isn't part of that. So it was really interesting to see how much of a separation there has come between people under 40 in particular and the church itself. Mm -hmm. we're, we're essentially in the dark ages in America today. We've got to start with the assumption that these people know nothing, and if they know anything about Christianity, it's, it, it may not be positive. And so we, we've got to take a whole different approach to, to what it means to bring somebody into God's presence. 